Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to St. Albans. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing on page 356 together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, we may, for love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Job. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observing the ca observe the calving of the deer? Can you number the months that they fulfill? And do you know the time when they give birth, when they crouch to give birth to their offspring and are delivered of their young? Their young ones become strong. They grow up in the open. They go forth and do not return to them. Who has let the wild ass go free? Who has loosed the bonds of the swift ass to which I have given the step for its home, the salt land for its dwelling place? It scorns the tumult of the city. It does not hear the shouts of the driver. It ranges the mountains as its pasture, and it searches after every green thing. Is the wild ox willing to serve you? Will it spend the night at your crib? Can you tie it in the furrow with ropes? Or will it harrow the valleys after you? Will you depend on it because its strength is great? And will you hand over your labor to it? Do you have faith in it that it will return and bring your grain to your threshing floor? The ostrich's wings flap wildly, though its pinions lack plumage for it leaves its eggs to the earth and lets them be warmed on the ground, forgetting that a foot may crush them and that a wild animal may trample them. It deals cruelly with its young, as if they were not its own. Though its labor should be in vain, yet it has no fear, because God has made it forget wisdom and given it no share in understanding. When it spreads its plumes aloft, it laughs at the horse and its rider. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Uh, Psalm 121 will read responsibly by half verse. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot be moved. 
Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel. The Lord himself watches over you. So that the sun shall not strike you by day. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, uphold thou me that I might uplift thee. Amen. Before I turn to the words that I prepared for this morning, I simply want to say that the news in the Holy Land is very much on my mind and heart this morning. Um, I haven't fully had a chance to digest it, and, and so I will not be addressing it in the sermon this morning, but, uh, but it will be the topic of my weekly message in this week's newsletter that comes out on Thursday. And I do um, ask for your prayers and, and um, for you to, to continue to hold the people of that land in your hearts. This morning, my remarks will be a little bit more suited for our outdoor service that we're doing at 1030. So I'm gonna need you all to use your imaginations and pretend that we're outside and that you can hear the birds chirping and that you can see the squirrels frolicking and that you can uh, imagine the, the dogs barking and the cats meowing. Um, I need you to, to really enter into that space of holy imagination. Are you there? Can you do it? I knew you could. Today we are celebrating one of my favorite saints, Francis of Assisi. Now, Francis lived a long, long time ago in Italy. He started out as a young man with a lot of money and a lot of things who liked to have fun adventures. But after a while, Francis came to care more about Jesus than he cared about money 
and things and adventures. So he made some changes in his life. He gave all of his money and his stuff away and became poor like Jesus was. And he spent the rest of his life telling people about God. But not just people. St. Francis was also known for preaching to the birds. Have you heard that tale about him? Yeah. He recognized that they were just as worthy as anyone else to hear the good news. Now, I am no saint like Francis, but I have always wondered what it would be like to preach like he did to the birds. And so today, my homily is primarily designed for the non-human creatures among us. It's okay if the humans want to listen too. There might be something worth hearing for you all. But it's, this, this message in the spirit of Francis is for um, the non-human creatures. So good morning, creatures great and small. Good morning, dogs and cats and chickens and goats. Good morning, crows and robins and sparrows and woodpeckers. And I will even say good morning to you, spiders and fire ants and skunks and snakes. Some of you I enjoy, and some of you I would rather not get close to, but all of you belong to God, just like me and my human friends here. God made you, and God made me, and God made this beautiful world that we live in together. And so today, a little bit later, we're, we'll be giving out blessings to some of you, but it really is you creatures who bless us. And so today we tell God thanks for making all of you. But this morning I also want to tell you creatures that I am sorry. I am sorry that we humans do not always do a very good job of taking care of this beautiful home that God gave us to share with you. We humans have been often wasteful and greedy, and because of our actions, many of your fellow creatures are in danger, and plenty of others have already become extinct. We are in danger of losing the Galapagos penguins, and the bluefin tuna, and the giant river otters, and the African elephants, and the North Atlantic right whales, and the polar bears, and the hawksbill turtles, and the black rhinos, and the bonobos, and the koalas, and the Panamanian gold, golden frogs, and the monarch butterflies that visit our gardens right here at St. Albans. Plenty of other magnificent creatures, too. And I will be honest, this makes me feel truly sad and also mad and tired. And maybe it makes some of you creatures feel that way too. And if that is the case, well, it just so happens that our scripture readings for today were especially written for anyone feeling sad or mad or tired or all three at once. Today, in our first reading, we heard God talk to a man named Job, and Job was having a ridiculously, truly awful time, a really, really hard time in his life, and he is deeply sad and mad and tired, which is understandable given the things that he has been put through. And so... For chapters and chapters and chapters, Job shares his sad and mad and tired feelings with God and with his friends. And he, he just talks and talks about how unfair it all is, right? And then in the part we read today, God enters the chat and lets Job know he's not alone. God reminds Job that he's not the one in charge. 
Job be, not the one in charge. And God does this by asking Job what he knows about animals. That's weird, right? But God does this to make a point. God knows all about mountain goats and deer and donkeys and ostriches because God made the mountain goats and the deer and the donkeys and the ostriches. And just like God made all of you critters too, right? You squirrels and you puppies and kitty cats and grasshoppers. And so this part of the book of Job reminds all of us that God made all of us, not the other way around. God made us, and so our job is to trust God even when we are sad or mad or tired, especially when we are sad or mad or tired. And then in the other scripture reading we heard from the Gospel of Matthew, we hear Jesus speak directly to anyone who is feeling sad or mad or tired. And Jesus says to those folks, come to me, friends. Come to me when you are weary, when you're sad or mad or tired. This goes for all of us. Whether we have fur or feathers or skin or scales, I believe that Jesus cares for each one of us. Even when your species is in danger, Jesus cares for all of you. And even when the rest of us humans let you down, Jesus cares for you. And next I want to say to all of the birds and butterflies and bees and all the rest of the animals here and around the world that there is some good news. Not only does Jesus care for you, but Jesus reminds us to care for you too. And even though we humans have done so much damage to your world, there are people who do care about you like Jesus taught us to. And especially the young people. We're going to have a bunch of them here in a little while for our 1030 service. And they seem to understand better than a lot of grown-ups about how to take care of this amazing universe God made. They're not in charge of things yet, but they will be someday. And I believe they will make good choices, better choices sometimes than we have made, us grown-ups. I believe that they will find new ways to protect you so that you can thrive. And so thank you, creatures. Thank you for blessing us. May God, who created you, and may Jesus, who cares for you, help each of us to do our part, to live a little bit more like Francis so that you can live as you were meant to. Amen. Turning now to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us together affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For the richness of the mountains, plains, and rivers. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of humans. For all creatures that breathe and move and have life. We thank you, Lord. For the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees. We thank you, Lord. That we may love and honor all your works, O oh God. We pray to you, Lord. That we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation. We pray to you, Lord. For peace in the Holy Land. For those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, together we pray for Ama, Courtney, Dale, Debbie, Frank, James, Howard and family, Jay, Jude, Kate, Lisa, Mark, Mary, Mike, Sandy, Stephanie, Suzanne, Tara, Whitney, and Helen. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Robert Allen and Scott Jones, and for all the departed. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Turning now to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, St. Albans. Good morning. Wonderful to be with all of you on this beautiful, chilly fall morning. And uh, thank you for being here with us. Welcome to anyone who is new with us today. We're so happy you're here and would love to chat with you over some coffee after the service and, um, and share anything. Um, that you are interested in about St. Albans. This is a wonderful community, and we are thrilled that you are here. Um, if you are interested in getting connected, we have our newcomer notebook that you can um, fill out, and that'll get you connected to our newsletter, which is the best way to stay up to date about all the things going on around here. And it's quite a lot these days. So um, you can also use the QR code on the back of your bulletin to do the online newcomer form. Either way is great, but welcome, welcome. Got some announcements for you all today, but first wanted to say um, a big thank you to everyone who um, helped out or came out uh, for Oktoberfest last night. It was so fun. We had a wonderful turnout here, and um, I think everyone seemed to have a great time. And so thank you so much to everyone who volunteered, who donated items for the raffle, uh, all sorts of different ways that people stepped in and made it happen. So thank you. A big, big thank Thank you to the, the leadership team. They're not, they'll be at the next service, um, but just know that we are so grateful for their hard work and putting it all together. Um, and they asked me to remind anyone who did donate something for the raffle that if you need a tax um, form that you can get one of those from them, just reach out to Sarah. Her email is, um, is should be in, um, in the newsletter this week, I believe, or I can get it to you. Uh, and then if you think you might have won a raffle item, I think that you've been communicated with, but um, those can be picked up today in the office. So wonderful Oktoberfest last night, very exciting. And of course, um, keep those of us at 1030 in your prayers as we are outside with all the critters this morning a little bit later. Um, let's see. You'll see in the, the first announcement in your insert is that we're having a bishop's forum next week, but that has actually been changed. Uh, Bishop Jennifer's not able uh, to be with us at that time, so we will not be having a forum with her, but she will be at the 1030 service next week and at the coffee hour following. So if you'd like to meet Bishop Jennifer and get to know her a little bit, um, you know, come on to, one of, to either the 1030 service or the coffee hour following and, and you can get some time with her. Uh, but I, it, um, we will have a very wonderful uh, adult formation opportunity coming up soon. So I'm gonna invite Derek Rosselli up to tell you about it. Good morning, thanks Carmen. Uh, my name is Derek Rosselli, I'm a student at Duke Divinity and uh, also a ministerial intern here at St. Albans. Um, so I'm here to tell you about a opportunity on October 22nd, 29th, and then November 12th and 19th. So come up towards the end of October, we'll have four sessions in between the eight o'clock and 10.30 to explore God in you. It's a book written by a Jesuit a spiritual director named Father William Barry, and it uh, emphasizes prayer as a personal relationship, and we'll be exploring different types of prayer to deepen relationships. So if you're interested or just curious, uh, I'll be in, I'll, I'll be, uh, 
what do you call that? The nar narthex. Thank you. I'll be in the narthex with. Um, there's been a. Uh, there's a couple of copies of this book that have been donated. So you don't have to register to come, but if you do register, the first few people that do register, you'll get a free copy of the book. And I think that's it. So thank you. Thank you, Derek. You it's um, going to be a wonderful class and, and good discussions, and we'll all get to um, go a little bit deeper into the topic of prayer uh, with Derek's help and leadership. So um, I hope you all will take advantage of that coming up um, starting October 22nd at 10 past 9, right? Awesome. All right. Now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues on page 369 with the great thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer C. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. 
and in the fullness of time you sent your only son born of a woman to fulfill your law to open for us the way of freedom and peace by his blood he reconciled us by his wounds we are healed and therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets apostles and martyrs and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me after supper he took the cup of wine gave thanks and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Sarah and Abraham, Rebecca and Isaac, Leah, Rachel, Bilhah, Zilpah, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and in you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning now to page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I pray that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp what is the length and width and height and depth of the love of Christ. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.